Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Thanks for uh, joining in today. Today we are back in Jammeri. I think uh, this is video number 19 by now. It could be 20. I think it's 19, though. But uh, we're going to talk about how to take something as formal as a switch list like this, which is very structured. It's got uh, road, number, car type, length, color, load status, where it's coming from, where it's going. And we're going to make it into something that is far less formal and far more flexible. Uh, so for those of you guys who are looking for maybe have or having rather more of an informal approach to operating uh, your road and don't want quite as much structure but still want some guidance, uh, this video is for you. So stay tuned for the next part. All right, guys. So here is the plan. We are going to talk about how to use the car orders system. Uh, in your operations and how to take JMRI and kind of mimic this to a certain degree. So what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go through this entire PowerPoint. Uh, this is a great PowerPoint to describe the car orders operating system. Uh, if you look up the Utah NMRA, uh, you can find their information on the car order system. And I'll probably put a link to their website and to this particular PowerPoint in uh, the description of this video because this is available for free on the web. So uh, anyways, I'm sure you can find more info on that if you look it up. Some of you guys may be familiar with this, but I wanted to kind of mention how you can get a little bit more structure uh, out of this with JMRI. So the whole purpose of car orders is to just keep things really simple. So these are some of the other options you have for operating. Uh, this is just kind of demonstrating some things to you that you can use. Oh, that looks familiar. Look at that. Ah, JMRI. Anyways, um, the whole point of car orders is to make it a lot easier. Trying to keep it simple, trying to worry about uh, you know car reporting marks and numbers and all that stuff, or trying to not deal with physical cards. Uh, we're gonna make it where it is a lot less stressful, but it still gets cars moving. So this was the demonstration of how you structure the card. <clears throat> Obviously, JMRI is not gonna do that. What JMRI is gonna help you with is more like this, getting the car from a location to another. Uh, and so like here, it, it talks about a train uh, that it ships across the layout from staging to staging. And as it goes to the yards, it drops off some uh, cars here and there. And the car order system allows you to do that with a very informal approach. Basically, you just draw cards for covered hoppers and box cars and whatever else, and it gets left in the yard and then the local takes it. It's actually a great system for a much more relaxed uh, style of operating. But what I noticed when I set up a route using uh, car orders is that when I wanted to have any level of reasonable sophistication, uh, it did actually get really challenging to create some ideas to kind of keep things reasonable, meaning that I didn't want a tank car with chemicals going to a scrapyard um, or, you know, a car full of steel pipes going to a food factory, uh, you know, things that didn't make sense. And so I, I at different places and different things, I added some uh, some methods to kind of create some consistency and some specialization. And I realized that, you know what, if there is a way that I can get JMRI to more or less give me the cars that need to move and then keep track of it, I can accomplish the same task. So let me shift over to uh, JMRI and then we will get into that side of it with what I want to show you. It's not going to take very long, but uh, I would highly encourage you guys, if you're looking for something a little more informal, uh, not very structured, but still lots of fun. Definitely go check out the car orders. Uh, I personally probably would not use car orders for myself because I do like structure. I like very meticulous and uh, organized movements, but that's just me. But this is fantastic if you're looking for something more informal. So, all right, guys, I'll see you over in JMRI. All right, so the first thing you need to do is get your car list set up. So what I did was I created a copy of my North Texas Beltline data set here. So these are all the cars I've got recorded uh, in the North Texas Beltline, this is 575 cars, quite a bit. All right, we've got number, uh, road marks, <clears throat> sorry, we've got car type, length, load status, location, destination, the train they're on, if they're currently on a built train, and how many times they have been pulled for movements. Oh, wow, I have a train that hasn't moved ever. Or a car, sorry, that hasn't moved ever. Oh, that's sad. Anyways, so... You first need to set this up, and in JMRI, you have to give it a car number, and you have to give it a road name. So here's my best advice for you. If you want to add cars uh, where you don't care about the car uh, number or the road marks, then when you go to add a car, just 
let it sit on the default and then give it a number one. All right, and then just select the type and then you can add, quickly change that to two, add another, change to three, add another for however many cars you need. Uh, I'll make a video later on about importing car rosters from a spreadsheet, but that's another way to do it that's even faster. Let's say, for example, you know that your railroad has 50 box cars, 30 covered hoppers, 20 coal hoppers, and 15 tank cars. Well, it's really easy to make that in a spreadsheet uh, with road numbers that count. <clears throat> that count, sorry. And then you can just import that into JMRI. It's extremely fast. So I'll make another video on that some other day because I haven't set that up yet. But that would be my recommendation because if you're never going to care about these two pieces of information, but they're required, then do it the fastest way possible and just don't care about it. That's kind of the whole point for running car orders is we specifically don't care about those two things right there. All right. Now, the next thing to know is we want to get into the trains menu, go to tools, manifest print options, and we want to make this where it also removes some of the unnecessary information. So you can customize this as much as you want. But for our cars here, we're going to take out roads. So we're going to put a blank there, take out number, put a blank there. And then for uh, type, we're going to leave the type. The length, it's kind of up to you. I personally would leave the length for myself because, for example, if the type just says covered hopper, if I want to be that generic, but I specifically want a shorter covered hopper like a two bay, then I'd want the length to show up. Now, honestly, for me, you know, I've got... Um, I've got different covered hopper types in there. So you could also turn length off. We definitely don't want to care about color and uh, we don't care about load, all right? Or the type of load or the risk or whatever, the, the you know, whether it's hazardous or not. You can put on here if you want information about its destination, but as we can see, that's here on the set out as well. And then I would just hit the minus button here. It deletes all those spaces. Obviously, you can keep spaces in there if you want your information spread out. It's really up to you. But same thing here for these setouts. We're going to take this stuff out. And we're just going to leave the type and the destination. All right. Awesome. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit save. All right. I'm not going to worry about the uh, local move because I'm not going to print a switch list that covers that. But I would do the same thing here. I would only keep, you know, type. Uh, and then location and destination. Now you'd have to keep both if you wanted to do move. So everything else would go. All right. And this, I haven't programmed any locomotives, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. Okay. We hit save, close that out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this train that's currently built and I'm going to reprint its spreadsheet. Uh, let's call it that. All right, and then let's go open that document back up. So desktop, there it is. All right, look at that, look at that, look at it. That is fantastic. So all we have here tells us to pick up. It's got a car type, it tells us where to get it. And this is literally the essence of the car order system is we only care about the type. We don't care about anything else. Obviously it tells you where to get it from. And the reason I like the idea of using JMRI as a bit of a supplement for getting your cars moving is it helps you just keep better track of where things are so you can still add as much sophistication as you want to. But I am going to be honest. If you only ever really are going to have one major yard on your layout and from that one major yard you service, you know, a few small towns and then that's pretty much it, you really don't need to do even this. You really can just do a pure car, car order system. Uh, but, you know, like I said, I wanted a reasonable mix of um, of, of some, some structure and some flexibility, but still not having to care about the fine details. I really wanted to just care about the type. And so this is the benefit here. Uh, but this really helps, especially if you're going to do some interchanging with some other railroads. I noticed that especially with car order system, it was kind of sophisticated to come up with a good method for doing an interchange between two separate railroads, especially if it was done, you know, at a grade crossing instead of uh, in a yard somewhere. So it's not impossible. It just took some thought and some some planning and just trying to keep it simple. I was like, you know what? If I can keep track of cars and where they're supposed to go uh, through JMRI without having to do or spend rather, you know, tens of hundreds of hours <laughs> putting uh, cars into the uh, roster, then this would be fantastic. So obviously here for our set out list, it tells us the type of type of car, tells us where it's going. And that's really all we need to know. Because this car, this train picks up in uh, North Paris staging, 
it goes to uh, Paris and it just picks up one car. So just go to the team track, go find a box car. If there's more than one, you pick whichever one you want to grab and you grab it. And that's the nice thing about car orders. Uh, then we get to Kingston Yard. We have four pickups. So you would go uh, find these cars and wherever you wanted to pick them up from in Kingston Yard, you'd grab them. Now, to be fair, obviously my Kingston Yard crew would also have access to this info and they would probably have picked those for you, but that's okay. It's kind of the same deal. It doesn't matter any of the finer details. And of course we have three set outs, so we would just pick two box cars and a, and a three bay, three bay uh, fertilizer hopper, covered hopper. So what that means is if you wanted to grab some toward the back of your train or toward the front of your train, that, that'd be fantastic. You do just that. That's the beauty of it. It's flexible. And then here it kind of helps you see where they need to go because it, it's technically still more or less routing them for uh, their proper industries. You don't even have to have that. You don't. However, I like having that because I don't want to send a covered hopper to an industry that doesn't need it. Uh, but anyways, there's there's that. And then, of course, the rest of the train makes it to uh, Santa Fe staging where it terminates. So this is considerably different from uh, the original with far more detail. But you'll notice it's the same train. We pick up in North Paris staging. We head to uh, Paris. We work the team track. <clears throat> we pick up some cars from Kingston Yard. We drop a few more off. In fact, they look they might look like they might be the exact same cars. Hmm. <clears throat> and then what's left of our train it makes it into Santa Fe staging. So fun times, but uh, just an idea for making something far less stressful or uh, what's the word cluttered than this. If you want to get just some of the key info, like the type of car and where it's going, it's very easy. It's just once again, real quick, you go into your trains menu, you go to tools, manifest print options, and you remove everything except the piece of uh, piece of information that you want. So hopefully this was uh, interesting and helpful if you want something more informal, but uh, feel free to ignore this idea if you definitely like the structure and other benefits that JMR provides. And I would highly encourage you guys to uh, go check out the car order system uh, from the Utah NMRA and uh, just take a look at kind of, of the idea. It's, it's, a, it's a great alternative idea for something with far less structure, but still gets a lot of meaning uh, out of the operation. So thanks again, guys, and we will see you guys next time. <laughs>